still to come on our program. Canada has been hit hard by America first. How has Canada dealt with Trump's threat of scrapping NAFTA? Canada will always, you know, advocate against protection. Welcome back. You're still watching World Insight. I'm Tian Wei. The program is coming to you Monday to Friday on CGTN. The World Trade Mechanism may be under siege. U.S. President Donald Trump favors bilateralism and especially unilateralism. But it's not China-U.S. trade that's being affected alone. Canada, U.S. friendly neighbor in the North, is upset that Trump has threatened to pull out of the North America Free Trade Agreement, or NAFTA. I recently sat down with Merit Ng, Canadian Minister on Small Enterprise and Export Promotion. She's a Chinese Canadian who was born in Hong Kong. She told me that Canada believes strongly in free trade, especially for its small and medium-sized enterprises. Canadian officials are working around the clock with their U.S. counterparts to keep NAFTA intact. The U.S. has set September 30th as the deadline. The two sides still disagree on major issues, and Canada has urged more flexibility from the U.S. And certainly Canada believes that both Canada and the United States would be better off if these inappropriate tariffs on Canadian softwood lumber were to be removed. Last month, President Trump reached a preliminary agreement with Mexico to replace the 24-year-old North American Free Trade Agreement. NAFTA was a disaster, and we've changed it around. However, NAFTA's third member, Canada, was excluded from their bilateral accord. The uncertainty regarding NAFTA has already hurt investor confidence in Canada, but a bigger threat looms over its economy. Trump said he might impose a 25% tariff on Canadian auto exports, which is one of Canada's most important industries. Because I love Canada. But they've taken advantage of our country for many years. They have tremendous, tremendous uh, trade barriers, and they have tremendous tariffs. NAFTA covers the largest free trade area in the world, encompassing 1.2 trillion U.S. dollars in annual trade. Despite NAFTA's vital role in the Canadian economy, Canadian Prime Minister Trudeau has reiterated that Canada will not make too many concessions. I said from the very beginning, no NAFTA deal is better than a bad NAFTA deal. Uh, and we are going to remain uh, firm on, uh, on that principle because Canadians expect us uh, to stand up for them and that's exactly what this government is going to do. Canada is one of the United States' closest allies and trading partners. Last year, 76% of Canada's exports went to the U.S. Since Trump took office, he has already imposed tariffs on Canadian steel, aluminum and solar panels. One study found that if NAFTA were to disappear, the Canadian economy would contract by 2.2 percent, while the effect would be much smaller for the United States. Madam Minister, what a pleasure to have you on CGTN. It is wonderful to be here. Thank you so very much. We understand the trade disputes going on between China and the United States. We also understand Canada is trying to work on a trilateral trade negotiation result. Madam Minister, what do you think about the prospect? Well, um, we're working very hard at, uh, you know, at an agreement uh, you know, with uh, the United States and Mexico. Free trade is really important to Canada. And uh, uh, not unlike uh, the present situation, uh, you know, we have had uh, uh, you know, tariffs uh, levied against uh, our steel and aluminum. And I can say that, you know, that we will always, as a government, stand up for our workers and stand up for Canadian businesses uh, in Canada. Having said that, though, while you are standing up for the businesses, one would assume that there might be some challenges both for the general economic picture and also for the future world's concept about global trade. Yes, of course. I mean, you know, Canada is a trading country. We believe in free trade and we believe in a rules-based system. Um, we Whose will... rule is it? 
I think it's, uh, it's, you know, I think it's the world's rule. I mean, I think it's, uh, we've benefited from a rules-based system. We have benefited as a country in job creation through free trade. So it's really important for us to keep opening access, greater access into markets for our Canadian businesses. But how could you do that? Well, I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, our government, uh, you know, has uh, concluded trade agreement with uh, the European Union through CETA. In Parliament, uh, my colleague minister, uh, you know, has uh, proceeded to ratify the CPTPP in our Canadian Parliament, meaning that uh, that we will uh, we will be trading with uh, the Asian Pacific countries about 13 countries, so really important for, uh, for Canadian small businesses and medium-sized businesses so that they can have access to these customers in these global markets. Right. Having heard all of this, Madam Minister, it seems that you are suggesting, with the efforts coming from Canada, that the world picture of trade and trade mechanism actually could be facing a dramatic change. Can you help us to grasp the real nature of this transformation? For us in Canada, you know, as I said, we are a trading country, and uh, and having our people put into trade agreements is really important. The trade agreements that we have negotiated of recent, you know, have chapters in it that actually provide access to markets for our small and medium-sized businesses, but it also provides access, uh, you know, to women entrepreneurs and women-led businesses as well. So having, uh, you know, having our societies considered and be a part of those trade agreements is a very important thing for uh, the prosperity of Canadian businesses but uh, but all businesses. How do you see the fact that some of the biggest economies in the world are retreating from the global system at least apparently for now whether it's a negotiation tactic mm -hmm. or it is a long-term nature of those economies we don't know for this moment what does it mean for all of us and as a result how are we going to adjust and at the same time, thrive. You know, Canada will always, you know, advocate against protectionism. We will always advocate for, you know, open uh, markets and greater access for, uh, you know, for our, uh, for our businesses uh, abroad. A successful negotiation of, uh, you know, of, a, of trade agreements in, you know, in the, with the European Union or with, uh, you know, with CPTPP. And in fact, Canada is the only G7 country that has a free trade agreement with every other G7 country. Mm. So I would say that, uh, that this is something that we work hard to do. And, uh, and this is the kind of access that, uh, that our country uh, will want our businesses to have access to those markets and uh, that's how we're going to be able to create the kind of growth that uh, we are looking for for our small and medium-sized businesses in Canada. Which is going to benefit you more and your constituency? Is it only bilateral or it is going to be a combination bilateral, multilateral, trilateral, you name it? Well, I think that, uh, you know, uh, uh, trade diversification is, uh, is a portfolio that, uh, that uh, my colleague minister has. And uh, this is sort of why I'm here as well, right? I mean, this is a good time to diversify. It's a good time to uh, make sure that we keep exploring opportunities around the world and that we keep exploring uh, and securing greater access to these markets and to these customers for our Canadian businesses. On the other hand, at the time of challenge, given what is happening right now, to you, what are some of the priorities of your work? Right, uh, I'm thrilled to be the Minister for Small Business and Export Promotion. Small and medium-sized businesses are really important to middle-class Canadians, really important to uh, our economy. They're 90, you know, 90 percent of our businesses are small and medium-sized businesses in Canada. So my job is really, you know, the way I describe it is I help businesses start, I help them grow and scale, and I help them find access to international markets. You're a babysitter. <laughs> well, a I would like to see a proud babysitter and a servant. Growth. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, a proud supporter of all our small and medium-sized businesses. Their growth means uh, means economic prosperity for uh, for Canadians and uh, for our Canadian middle class. Mm. For Canadian small and medium-sized companies, Chinese medium-sized companies, mm. uh, and others. Uh, one of the biggest challenge is they don't have the bargaining power individually. Mm -hmm. However, when putting together with the support of the government and with the support of the right idea of global trade, they could thrive. But the thing is how to put them together. Mm -hmm. 
and also how to think beyond boundaries. Mm -hmm. That's very important. Um, you know, I was here, uh, you know, even while in China, I uh, was able to meet with a number of Canadian entrepreneurs. And it's interesting because I met them here in China. And why is this really important? It's really important because the part of my portfolio, which is about expert promotion, is really to help these small and medium-sized com companies find opportunities so that they can grow their enterprises in global markets. So speaking to Canadian entrepreneurs, the small and medium-sized businesses, as I, you know, as I have done, uh, is really encouraging because they are growing and they're growing globally. Uh, a Canadian enterprise with, uh, with uh, you know, Canadian research and development, but they are finding customers and co-locating. But what if they are facing difficulties overseas? Your largest neighbor, for example, is an interesting case study. Uh, currently, how are you helping your small and medium-sized companies to go through this uh, apparently at least uh, mm -hmm. difficult times? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, um, domestically at home, my job is to help small and medium-sized businesses become export ready so that they can take advantage of the trade agreements that we have completed and the market access abroad. And then we also, what I like to call, Canada's best sales force. So we have the Trade Commissioner Services that operate 160 offices all around the world. This is Canada's best sales force because they operate in the world and they are able to help our Canadian SMEs understand the market, the customers, and how best to access, uh, how best to access that and, uh, and put financing together to help them scale and grow into, into these international markets. China and Canada have been working together on trade and many other issues, but many ask the question, at this crucial juncture, can the two countries, together with the others, be inspiring and aspiring enough? Yeah, you know, uh, Canada and China have a, you know, a deep relationship and a strong friendship. And uh, we already are doing some really exciting initiatives uh, together. I mean, we have... Uh, we have signed uh, uh, a joint agreement on climate change, and we have also uh, signed an agreement around agriculture exports, uh, uh, exports and imports. So, and this year actually is 2018, uh, as a result of the Prime Minister's trip here in 2016. This year is Canada is the year of Canada-China tourism. So, there are many things that we are already working at as a country, and we will continue to have explore, continue that work, and continue the exploration of collaborating together. Madam Minister, you might be much more well aware than many of the others that China and Canada established the diplomatic relations very early in the day mm -hmm. because Canada was the very first so-called Western country mm -hmm. to de establish diplomatic mm -hmm. relationship mm -hmm. with China. And it was during the Trudeau senior yes. administration. Mm -hmm. Many in China and in Canada remember those yes. historical moments mm -hmm. very well. Um, Having said that, though, we are in Trudeau Junior administration, and people wonder what's likely to be the strength that this administration to put into the bilateral relations. Right. Well, you know, China and Canada, you're right, has a deep history and a fond history. It takes a lot of political guts to do it at that time. Indeed, indeed. And, um, and you know, when I look at, uh, at where we are today, China is Canada's second largest trading partner. Uh, just in this last year alone, uh, our bilateral trade was about $100 billion. And uh, Chinese Canadians are a, uh, they're an important fabric of the Canadian society. Absolutely. You know, there's 1.6 million Chinese Canadians in Canada from coast to coast to coast. So the people-to-people -people relationship uh, really is a platform or a cornerstone for us to keep uh, working on our, uh, you know, on our friendship, but also on our on our economic collaboration. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so there is uh, there is wonderful opportunity ahead. What are you suggesting? Well, what I'm suggesting is uh, what we've already started doing, right? I mean, we've already entered into, you know, into discussions, uh, and uh, and we will continue to, you know, the two countries to work to find ways to, you know, to, to, to work together, perhaps towards a free trade agreement, but we certainly have already uh, started those and we will continue to do that work. Mm -hmm.
Is there any agenda or any timetable for starting a conversation related to exactly the topic you just mentioned? I would say that uh, that the work has already started, and uh, and any work that we're going to do will always be done in the interests, uh, you know, uh, to the interests, uh, you know. For Canadians and, uh, and, for, the and for the Chinese as well. So, so for uh, the win-win. It is a win-win. The win-win, what does it mean for the Canadians? What are the most important priorities? I think that, uh, you know, speaking as the Minister for Small Business and, uh, uh, and Expert Promotion, you know, for me a win-win is, uh, is making sure that I am fully behind uh, and being the biggest cheerleader and uh, champion for the growth of our small and medium-sized businesses in Canada. Talking about China-Canada relationship, we also see these two countries at this great juncture of time having the guts to speak out. That, many say, is also very important in today's world. Do you think Canada will still be able to do that in this administration, despite maybe some of the challenges from your neighbors? Well, I mean, you know, uh, Canadians expect uh, its Canadian government and leadership to, uh, you know, to speak out and, uh, and to affirm Canadian values. So whether that is, uh, you know, domestically or, you know, or abroad, uh, I think that uh, Canadians can be uh, comforted by the fact that, uh, that their government will always speak, uh, you know, in, uh, uh, in consistent with Canadian and Canadian values. Belt and Road Initiative, Madam Minister, is an important idea that China uh, provided to the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Well, at the same time, it is also inviting partners to work together on this idea. How is Canada looking at this idea? I know Canada is participating in AIIB mm -hmm. and also Canada has been working on with China to develop in a third party country mm -hmm. but how does it work from now on? Well I think that uh, that our continued uh, dialogue which we have at all levels of government between Ch Canada and China is a perfect way to be able to continue those exploratory discussions between our two countries. Madam Minister, you is a crystallization <laughs> of Asian Canadians and the role that the Asian Canadians have been playing in the Canadian society. You yourself was born in Hong Kong, in fact. I was, yes. So what was it like to be from a Hong Kong girl transforming yourself into a minister currently working for this administration, which very much emphasized, of course, on women's role and also on equity coming from different kinds of ethnic groups. Right, well, you know, I'm very proud to be a part of uh, an administration, you know, led by Prime Minister Trudeau, and to be a part of his gender-balanced cabinet. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, uh, and as a, you know, as a Chinese Canadian, someone who grew up from Hong Kong, I think I'm going to give a bit of the credit to my own dad, because yeah. the Prime Minister, uh, you know, um, speaks of himself as a feminist, and I would like to say that, you know, that I regard my father as a bit of a feminist. I mean, in Chinese culture, you know, and I would think that at the time that I was born, he actually, you know, probably had uh, some conflicting ideals, right? I mean, uh, he believed always that a girl could do anything that a boy could do, and essentially instilled that in me. And uh, and I'd like to think that uh, that that certainly set me up to a path of being able to, uh, you know, to, to aspire and uh, and to work hard, and uh, and believe that uh, that if you work hard and you aspire, that uh, that anything really is possible. And I hope that by taking on this role now as a cabinet minister in this, you know, in this government, that, uh, that there are going to be a lot of women like me and a lot of Chinese women like me who feel that participating and working hard, uh, they can follow a path way better than, you know, way better than mine. You're very modest, uh, <laughs> Madam Minister. Having said that, though, uh, how do you see about the so-called uh, old immigrants? and the new immigrants coming from Canada, particularly from the mainland. Uh, there has been a wave of them and also the Chinese students right now mm -hmm. in Canada. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful uh, to have, uh, you know, to have the, um, the diversity of, uh, of, of people in Canada. I think that, uh, that recent immigrants or Chinese students have, you know, have done well, uh, you know, in, in Canada is simply because we are a country that embraces, you know, inclusivity and diversity and, uh, and so... And hard work as and well. And hard work. So, uh, so I think that they, that they do find commonalities, uh, you know, and, uh, and find settling and uh, participating and, and, uh, and being educated in, uh, in Canada uh, something that uh, is a really positive experience for them. Thank you.